Gregerson family. So it says. Well, Gregersons, hate to tell you, but you married into the superior family, which was Sylvester's. And I don't mean hoodie tat. I mean Sylvester. The uh, wine bibber. See, in the 1800s, they lived here. This is called Bellevue. And there was two Bellevues in Utah. So they had to change. The post office says you got to change your name. Well, my great 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 aunt was the postmaster. And she chose Pintura, which means paint in Spanish. Or Mexican, as she said. Because everything looks like it's painted, right? Beautiful, huh? So the big one, the biggest one here is not these new ones. That's 67, I tune in. This is my great great grandfather, uh, James Sylvester. Got a picture of him at home. He looks like a cowboy. You've probably seen it if you look at any of the videos at my house when I'm playing guitar. I don't know how well it is, but so. Sylvester, that is the biggest one. And here on the top, there used to be this piece that beep came up. It broke off. I was at the drag races in Vegas in like 2000, 2001, 2000. And I had come by and noticed that it was gone or had fallen off. It was right here. I'm like, you know what? I should drive up from Vegas. It was like 10 o'clock. It would have been an hour or so to get here, grab the piece so we'd have it, and then uh, take it back so next family reunion we could come and uh, put it back on. But then I'm like, nah, I'm tired, forget it. Went home, came back the next time on the way up, and somebody had took it, or taken it. They stole it. So, jerks. But see, these, uh, these sandstone, this doesn't hold up well. See, this is all nice in memory of Rebecca N. Uh, well, Sylvester, but it's Rebecca, what is it, uh, Hanks married Sylvester, so it'd be Hanks to Sylvester, Sylvester to Batty, Batty to Skews, right. So married James Sylvester, December 18, 1816 to 1888. 1816 this guy was born. December 4th. Great-great-grandma. Uh, 1819, huh, to 1904, yes, February 9th, 1904. So these are my great-great-grandparents. My great-great-great Ebenezer Hanks is buried in Hanksville, where he should be. He founded the town. He got out of Dodge because he had a plural wife and he didn't want the uh, authorities messing with him all the time. But he had to ride into town up here, up into Parowan and Cedar and all that to set up the uh, iron mills. Well, he did that and then he would ride a two or three day a ride through canyons back usually staying with the uh, Behunin family, family whose great 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 grandson is in my church down in 
Burbank. That's one smart guy. Him and his wife, very smart, very energetic, almost so energetic you want to kick him in the head, but still very nice. So that's why I don't kick him in the head. Here's a new one. Glazier, glazier. Listen, 2016, really? Then I'm getting planted here. I don't want to. I want to be planted in Tokerville. Everybody's heading for Nauvoo. Not me. I want to go to Tokerville, which is down there. Down there, Spell. Just passed it not that long ago. I'm always looking for that piece, just in case. But I always come up with these rocks. This is a good sear stone rock. All right, we can't use a broken one. It's gotta be a, well, we won't get into sear stones. Even though the uh, stream coming down from Brian Head that runs through Parowan is known to have some of the best sear stones in the West. Just for your information. The sear stones are highly frowned upon outside of you know, people that are authorized to use them, which are one. And it's in the book. If you don't believe it, if you don't believe it, it's in the Bible. Urim and Thummim, seer stones. They're both in the Bible. That was a way to, to uh, have uh, things told to you through God. Just you know, it's it's a faith testing thing. It's not it's not magic. It's not it's faith. If you have faith that He's going to show you something on this stone well the stone could be made up of whatever I'm not going to go into it and maybe you might see something if you have faith everything is faith like this could be burning burning bush but that's not true there was no burning bush it was just a very bright light and as the story was told over and over and over about Moses talking to a burning bush, which is ridiculous. If you think about it, if you go to the original translation, the Greek uh, translation of the, uh, or the German translation of the Greek Septuagint, it says that Moses talked to God face to face. The Lord God, which means Christ, which means he was a spirit. And that's why people get mixed up. Because when Moses saw him, he was a spirit. When people see him now, he has a body of flesh and bone, a perfected body. It says it right in the book. So there's your uh, lesson for today. These are, even the Gregersons are related. But see, that's the marker, and that's where they're actually buried, where these two little markers are. But there you go. I always stop here because I want to connect with my ancestors. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be here. Here's Christina C. Sylvester, wife of Joseph W. Sylvester, April 1847. So she got here. She was born the year the saints arrived in the valley of the Great Salt Lake. And she died in 1881. That's not long. That's not a long life. I can't remember the story of this woman. I haven't. It's been so long, I got kind of uh, too much, too much genealogy, and I had to take a break for my own sanity, and now other people are doing it, and they're finding all this incorrect information. I'm like, why are you doing it? I have done all the genealogy back to the beginning. Adam and Eve, and if you don't believe in it, that's your tough crap. You pray to your your God science and see where that gets you. I've been on both sides. God wins. 
don't you think <laughs> the person the thing that's against God would want you to believe that he doesn't even exist because if he can get you to believe that then he's one he doesn't need you to believe in him and Satan and satanic churches the uh, this church of Satan they're atheists you know how pissed I was when I found that out I'm like you don't even believe in the guy no it's a money making thing I went up and talked to the idiot that used to run it. Now his son does. Actually, he was very smart, as is Satan. He was the son of the morning. Now he's the son of the morning, like his in morning. But uh, yeah, so this is a little pioneer grave in southern Utah, and there's one just ton just full of my family this has got a bit of my family look at that uh that's all lava up there is a obviously that's a mesa a gigantic one and all of this all of this my family owned all of it my drunk uncle cecil in the 70s sold it all like I can't remember it was a ridiculous amount of acreages it was like 2,000 acres he sold it for something stupid like a song and a dance I can't remember and my grandma wanted to rip his head off everybody did but he's like well it's not gonna go up anymore in price you know how much this is worth now millions and millions because over there they're mining we own that hey see on the truck hey all of this is a ranch there's the ranch but all this ranch land this is all ours now it's not because one greedy little son of a gun my uncle Cecil the only guy in my family that I ever sat down and drank a case of beer with this is before he came back to church. And him. Because see, he was going to do, he did what I was going to do. I was going to live it up, do what I wanted. When I was about 70s, in my 70s, go back to church, marry, make it all good, make it clear with God, and then die. That's exactly what he did. Except most of his family wanted to kill him. And most of his descendants have dropped away from the church. Except for the one that he lived with. Because he came back to church. Got all of his things restored to him. And, you know, a member of the church from full, full membership. And then passed away. So he did what I wanted to do. And he, what he was, you know what he was? He was a rock hound. This is what he did all day. And I used to do this with him when I come up in the in the uh, summers when I was a kid. Then when I came up later, I'd hang out with my third cousin, <clears throat> and me and her would hang out. And then uh, me and Cecil would drink. So there you go. All right, so there you go. There goes a couple of poser Harley guys. And uh, I gotta get going. I gotta get up to way out of here. There's a cruiser. All right, lights. Part three, day two.